I guess some people want to know, are aliens real and are they here right now and can we see them physically? Uh, aliens are very, very real. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe a lot of them, um, again, there's different realms and different dimensions. But for the most part, the interaction that I've had with them has been dimensional frequency. So it's a state of being. They are very, very real. They do exist and they do have crafts, some of which that are made of stone and look like uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs on the side of them. Some that are made out of organic matter, like a mushroom, smells like a mushroom, regenerates and grows as the population grows. Can you talk about like different, what kind of species have you interacted with? Well, the ones that I actually have the most knowledge about is actually insectoids. That would be uh, the mantis beings. Mm -hmm. uh, so my first interaction with uh, the mantis beings was actually when I was really young. I was actually in a park with a, um, my next door neighbor, this guy called uh, Richard Brooke. And we were going along and all of a sudden, everything went silent. Birds, crickets, you could not hear a single thing. It was almost like time stopped. The wind stopped stopped moving and everything was completely still. And it felt, the air felt charged and my hair was like so static. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? And then next news, just this gigantic stone triangular craft wow. came over. I felt it come, I felt my hair just go like this. It was electric just going like this. And we literally fell to the ground and we were hiding where this like piece of uh, wood was. It went over and I could see that it actually had hieroglyphs. And to me, it actually looked like a lot of the stuff that I'd seen in school about the pyramids. I was like, this is bizarre. I then remember being in a room and it was a room that was um, circular and there was like a lot of mantis beings or it was almost like being in a school and it was like there was like there was one main talk speaker who had like a podium and there was all these beings that were all in the thing and i was suspended a beam of light um in the middle of this circle i just remember like thinking like what is going on i can't move i remember just hearing a voice just saying it's okay it's all right just can't keep calm we're just here to show you some things and i don't remember what they showed me on that time and then i remember just being back on the ground with richard and richard was crying and then we went home. So that was my first one. That was my first one. I didn't really know how to um, explain it to anybody. At that time as a kid, I'd always find myself in a situation where grasshoppers, praying mantis or stick insects would find me. And I actually kept stick insects at that time. It's a natural fact, some of the mantis beings wear capes. Um, they wear a lot of purple. And they also wear these uh, bracelets and they can change the gravitational force depending on where they are at the time. Because I've traveled with them to different places like Venus and Mars with them and they can change their gravity, their gravity field around them to fit the environment. And the, the mantis beings are actually mainly observers and teachers mm. and they're actually, they range between the eighth dimension and the twelfth dimension. Can you describe kind of what they look like? Do they look like human bodies or? Can you imagine a giant praying mantis, like a mm. really big giant praying mantis? They vary in colors just like they do here on Earth. The funny thing is though is, is, is actually the way that they walk. Okay. So so like on earth, obviously they, they walk with both legs. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of the mantis beings actually walk on two legs, but they can't put one leg in front of the other like this. Mm -hmm. They have to sidestep. So they oh, do these wow. funny little sidesteps. Uh, they have a lot of humor. They really mm -hmm. like to tell jokes. They communicate mainly telepathically, but they actually also can do um, a series of, they're like clicking sounds. Um, what was your friend's rem memory? He didn't remember anything. He just remembered the craft. And why do you think you remember and he didn't? I don't know, but I've had that with another friend too, my friend Liz, and um, she'll verify this story. But I called them on this one occasion they came and the craft actually landed, <laughs> believe it or not, in the back garden of her friend's house. It was kind of a big garden. So when the craft landed, she saw everything that happened prior to that, like the craft doing all these crazy things. She was like, wow, she'd never seen a UFO. And I was like, well, you know, here you go. And so it landed with a gigantic flash that actually felt like a very energetic kind of pulse, almost like an EMP, I guess that would feel. And I don't know whether that actually stunned her, froze her in time, I don't know, because I was then on the ship. Mm -hmm. Although prior to my getting on the ship, I'd actually run my hand along the craft and the hieroglyphs uh, lit up blue. And then I remember wow. being inside the ship. Again, when I'm inside the ship, there, there is kind of a school, like they'll teach you telepathy and they teach you how to move things. And it always starts with like either a feather or a piece of paper. And then you just uh, go through like a teaching and they'll sometimes hold you in this like beam that I've talked about. And they'll show you like uh, holographic images of earth, of what they don't want to happen, of what they, you know, would like to happen. Yeah, but it's 
it's always a very positive experience with them. So your friend, did she get the teaching, but she just doesn't remember it? I think she got the teaching, of, I, I think she doesn't remember it. Do you think she doesn't remember because the brain can't process or they don't want her to remember? I think sometimes, like, especially on some of the first visitations that you do or the first, like, off-planet situation that you do, I think it's very hard for the brain to actually comprehend what you're actually going through. Mm -hmm. So it'll either shut down or it'll show you a, an image that's easier for you to process. So instead of seeing like a giant praying mantis laughing with all his mandibles out, you might see Mickey Mouse because your brain can't handle it. And how does time go by? Like, were you gone for two hours, but two minutes here? Oh, actually, I've lost. I've actually gone backwards in time on several occasions where I've actually gained four hours. Sometimes I'll lose several hours. But when I'm actually on the craft, I can't really say I feel time per se. Mm -hmm. I don't ever feel like, oh god, I'm so bored, I want to go home. Or, oh god, that was too fast, let me stay. It's like, it's almost like there isn't anything, it's just a moment. Do you know anything about Palladians, the Yael's, the more famous ones that a lot of people know? Have you interacted with them? Palladians, yes. They're mainly they're female energy, the Palladians. Oh. But I, I have interacted with them, but not like I have with the Mantis people. I would say they're very gentle beings. They actually look upon Earth quite a lot and they're always looking to help. They actually always want to help in actual fact. I want to speak to you, I want to help, like what can I do? They, they're actually very uh, earth conscious. The other ones that I've talked to are these red-headed giants. More of a warrior race in actual fact, but also very similar in the way that the mantis are. They're kind of like some form of guardian. Were the red-headed giants and Pleiadians coming to you with crafts? No, no. That's actually more t uh, telepathical communication actually here when I'm, when I'm here. I had interactions with reptilians too. Um, not always pleasant. They tend to come here rather than me go there. Is it true that our Earth, there's like a theory that our Earth is being controlled by reptilians or bad aliens? I think there is a power struggle, just how there is with light and with the light and the dark forces mm. anywhere. It's like the yin and the yang, you know, there's always going to be a balance. Well, okay, so I mean, you'd call it a shapeshifter then if you're not comfortable with that. But basically, they're taking on a form that isn't their form. Wow. And can you differentiate? I can. I can see them. How do you, is it like the eyes or? If they move, if they move a certain way or like shake their head or something, I can actually see what they look like. But there are good reptilians, there are bad reptilians. But the, the bad reptilians, they definitely have an agenda for sure here on this planet. And they do do a lot of controlling of us. And I do believe we are their slave race. But, but what else there is right now is there's a lot of en energy and a lot of influence from, let's say, more positive sources that are actually opening our eyes to see the corruption right now, to see the oppression. Parallel universe, there's always a saying that there's another you out there have you met yourself in a parallel universe? I have met versions of myself, yes. Mm. And I believe that in actual fact, when I'm doing that instant dimensional travel, when I'm seeing the Mantis people, I am in another universe or parallel self or like a different a different state of being again but i do know there actually is a galactic federation there is actually a spacecraft that's actually over us right now oh, it, wow. it, you can't ever see the ends of it i can't remember how many um races are actually in that craft but they are they all have interest they want us to see they want us to do well but it's like recently this year they how much money did uh, president trump give to the space force we don't have wars in space yet that we've actually just activated the space fence in usa and china so clearly there's things going on. Why would we even think about attacking beings that are so much advanced than us? But I can't answer that question because uh, I don't think that way. But uh, again, they just want to keep, they want to keep it exactly like it is here on Earth for as long as it oh. can stay. Um, are there any cat beings? Like who's up there? There's cat beings. There's, uh, there's Nordics who are very tall. There's dog beings too that actually look like Anubis. Uh, very similar kind of Egyptian kind of style looking dogs. There are are aquatic races that actually carry around their environment with them. Whoa. They, they just exist in their own bubble environment and they come with that uh, when there's meetings and stuff. There's the bird people the blue avians. I've only seen them like twice and that's mainly just being on a different craft and just seeing them around. I've seen people in army uniforms by the way as well on a lot of these crafts. Are they humans? Oh yeah, they are. They're part of the space program. There's actually some creatures that look like a, a mix between a fly, a wasp. Yeah, they're very kind of like a bee fly, wasp-like and they're very wow. old and very, very wise, like have a lot of knowledge and actually the mantis people actually spend a lot of time with those. Uh, there's arachnids as well. There's 
like ones that almost are like scorpion spiders. Or just sitting up or like? They, they use these hands to communicate and stuff. Again, they use clicks and things. I haven't had a lot to do with them. They look very scary. I, I haven't had any interaction with greys. I don't know why that is. I, I've heard that people come into somebody called like a tall white, but I've never seen that either. Oh, there's a dog. Oh, there's the dolphin creatures. Hang on. What's the name for them? I can't remember. But yeah, there's dolphins too. They're actually guardians of the universe. The ancient cultures actually said the same thing. The Tongva tribe from uh, Palos Verdes, California. The Tongva tribe would actually um, get very worried when they didn't see the dolphins because the dolphins were the ones that were looking after the area and the universe but the dolphins are actually really cool they're really cool and they actually don't um, carry their environment with them they just are but on their planet I don't know which one it is um, I've seen pictures in my head from it that I've, they've shown me do exist in the water and they're just very wise very kind uh, loving creatures for me I found it very difficult because they were talking in such a way that it was beyond my uh, ability uh, to understand oh they just look like our dolphins here absolutely just the same a hundred percent the same Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more iridescent, a little bit more glowy, but yeah, just the same. How do, do they have craft and come back here? Uh, no, they actually travel through, they use water, energetic vortexes, I guess, a vortex to travel through. They come to Earth all the time. They come to Earth and back to their planet all the time using water as their uh, conduit. I'm sure they populate the South Bay of um, California. It's, there's more dolphins there than I've seen ever, but there's the very big deep canyon and they are actually lots of USOs that are seen there. And I, In my brain, like you have to to have two arms to create a vortex, but to them it works differently. It's all from the mind. It's all oh. mind projected and field projected. Yeah, they can change their energetic fields to create new things. Do you have like a f close friend with an extraterrestrial? Or yeah, I have one close person. I don't have a name for him. I never have given him a name. He's the main one that I'm conversing with constantly. And again, he wears a purple cape. All the rest kind of have like more of a magenta purple, but he wears a dark purple one. And he actually still, he sometimes like visits me um, even if I'm just having a still moment. He'll pop into my head and then I'll see a whole bunch of pictures. Or Let's say hypothetically you were in a trouble situation where you were going to get in a car accident or someone's trying to kill you and can you summon them to come and help you or does it not work that way? Yes, he kind of does in actual fact. Okay, so last summer I was getting extremely unwell. <clears throat> I believe that I was living in, a, in an apartment with um, mold, but I'd been under a lot of stress. I was completely mm -hmm. un completely 100% unfunctional, but I was getting to the point where I was really feeling pretty desperate. And so I was calling out to them all the time, like, come on, please just mm -hmm. get me well. I need to be well. Because I know that I'd be on the crap before and I've come back and I felt much better. This is actually when I lost when I actually went, when I gained four hours, I all of a sudden I, I, I was I was actually crying. I was in my bed. It was probably about two o'clock in the morning, and I saw a star, um, but I immediately recognized it because it had a blue glint to it. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I've missed you. Where have you been? Like, thank goodness." Anyway, the next news, the star came, and there was like a big blue explosion outside my room. Next news, I'm on a craft. I'm on the craft, and they're they're spinning me around really, really, really fast. There's mm -hmm. no communication going on. I know where I am. I'm not sure what's happening, but I, I'm believing and I'm knowing that they're doing something good for me because I've been asking and requesting them. I don't remember the journey back and then I remember seeing the star move from my window up into the sky and I went, bye, thank you. Next news, I, I became extremely nauseous and I began throwing up just buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets. I mean, like huge amounts of mucus. And within that mucus, it was all these blue fibers, fibers that look like plastic. Some of them actually had eyes and looked like robots. What? And they were... Yeah, I've got pictures and they were moving and stuff and they were moving and um, anyway, after looking into this, I looked into it and what it looks like, it looks like Morgellons fiber. Well, how did you get those fibers? Where are those from? I have no idea. I think they're from chemtrails. What are your dreams like? Are, do you have normal dreams? Or I'll, I'll have dreams about um, other worlds. I'll have dreams about interacting with them. I'll have dreams of, um, about where somebody might give me or a download of something and um, I'll check it out in the morning. I'm like, oh my God, that's actually real. About a subject that I have no no knowledge of. Sometimes I do have horrible sleep paralysis where I know that someone's trying to pull me out of my body. With sleep paralysis, I used to have them all the time too. Is that a oh, negative really? force? Or just scientifically or brain? I think there's many different facets to sleep paralysis. I believe that there can be a dark energy there that can pull you because I felt it. I felt them on me. I've seen, I've seen them. But then I've also 
to have sleep paralysis when I've just like been taken out of my body and I've suddenly been on a, on a, on a craft and yeah. everything's been wonderful. I think it's part of um, astral traveling. Um, a lot of the times right now, I'll just end up in the middle of the co cosmos and I'm like hearing a voice. I'm like, whoa, how did I get here? I just went through the bathroom door whilst I was astral traveling. What? And now I'm here. Yeah, it's just the body coming out and starting to travel to where whatever kind of consciousness is pulling it to. Can you talk, talk about really interesting astral travel you had? The one that, that was really, it was just gave me a wow. It was actually just taking me into space. Hearing, actually there is sound in the, in, in the space. First it just sounded like a, uh, but when you tuned in, it was almost like there was a whole orchestra within that one sound. Uh, that was amazing and I, and I heard a voice and I remember him telling me all this source, let's just call it source, was telling me about the creation and everything being created by a singular sound. Can't say whether it's male or female. Uh, told me a whole other bunch of other stuff, but then I just couldn't remember it when I got back. <laughs> Who was this source? Like God or some newbie? Yeah, I believe a divine creator, the divine creator. Pretty amazing being suspended up in space and just seeing just all that beauty. It was really incredible how are the dogs and cat beings do they hate each other or love each other no they, they actually exist together oh. at times and they're totally fine they are absolutely completely fine with each other um, do they have many cats as their pets or um, i haven't seen their pets i mean the only thing that they related to me like i said is that um they see us here on earth as their pets they have an emotional bond with us and uh they do really very much like that we do have cats and we do have dogs and they're very tall they're very 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 tall beings really tall 3d are they like multi-dimensional they're multi-dimensional so like i said before as well like some some dimensional beings can actually decide that they want to suddenly like not be that uh dimensional reality anymore they want to incarnate into a physical form and they can do that same with the cat beans and the dog beans okay. i do know that that animals actually have their own little reapers that come to pick up their spirits to take them to the next world. So where do animals go? Like same place as us? Same place. Have you ever asked those beings like, oh, what's going to happen to me in 10 years? Or like, what's the lottery number? Or like, is that the question they don't answer? Kind of? Uh, you know what? I don't even ever ask those questions. Like in actual fact, that's not even something that would even come into my consciousness when I'm actually <laughs> you're operating on a completely different, different um, level in actual fact. And the mundane or like, you know the things about wanting wealth or things like that that no longer really matters what do the mantis eat or do they not I eat i don't have a clue i've oh. never seen me but that's a great question the next time i go there i'm gonna ask them what do you guys eat do they, <laughs> do they smell do they smell different they do have a smell actually it's gonna sound weird but when you were younger did you ever like handle ladybirds ladybug that smell they have it's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> Nature's like, she didn't go around sniffing ladybugs like me. <laughs> they kind of smell like a uh, grassish. There is a slight musky odor too. It's kind of an earthy scent. The uh, spider creatures, they have a horrible smell. And the fly type uh, wasp creatures, they have a smell that's a little bit pungent that I would say is actually kind of like would be offensive to us. Someone asked, how can we tap into our own abilities and talk to the ET? Oh, good question. The best way to answer that is, is when I'm actually at my most relaxed like or at my most like um not even paying attention so sometimes when I'm, in, when I'm in the shower when I'm in the shower or if I'm just about to fall asleep or I'm or even if I'm reading a book and I'm starting to zone out again what you really need to do is just say to them hey I'm inviting I but be specific with who you invite don't just say hey guys just come and talk to me because again like the Ouija board you don't know what you're gonna get it's about the emotion that you're feeling so you have to be you have to really give out a, you know of honesty what your intention is just ask them and invite them in invite them in and say hey I really want to connect with you guys i would like to learn from you or you know or i have questions or things like that but yeah just make sure you're at a relaxed state don't have anything that's gonna distract you i forgot to mention this there's an alien that actually looks like an elf she had um kind of like a whitish hair with big ears and she wore pink and she honestly she reminded me of a creature from a manga and i was fully conscious that we'd been interacting and she went like this boop, on my forehead and then next news i was in bed I have no idea what happened in between that. She was uh, a very creative being. Someone asked, is there a world or a planet where humans and aliens coexist? Yeah, I believe that's right now. <laughs> I believe it's right here, right now. I think we're existing here and the now. I think a lot of the uh, abductions or the cattle mutilations are from, uh, I don't know, people say that they're from some of the aliens from Zeta Reticuli 
um, who are doing hybrid experiments to further their race because they, they have non-gender. Yeah. I, I actually also believe that there's aliens that look just like us. Not Earth humans, but aliens, but actually living a life on Earth. What can an individual do to help humanity move in the right direction? Oh, uh, just be more loving, more accepting to everybody, and uh, just really strive to not just always help try be trying to help yourself. Be always thinking constantly, what can I do for others? What can I do? What does this person need? Ask questions. Okay. In actual term, what that does is it actually helps us and it helps the planet and it helps raise the vibration of not only yourself, but those other people on the planet's uh, vibration. Yeah, anything positive that you can add, even if it's just like doing the most mundane thing for somebody, it actually goes a very long way energetically. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, 